segment of Moments with Murph, we're going to talk about these types of men you want in your relationship or in a relationship. So we're going to start with the drum roll, the motivator slash encourager. I mean, honestly, ladies, like who wouldn't want to be motivated quite frequently? Like the one that's really pushing you to do better. Like that's someone who really cares. And again, you're being pushed by someone who cares. <laughs> like honestly, to me, that is there's nothing stronger than someone who really, you know, is trying to better you. Because you being better is going to help better them. Like, that's like that that friendly competition where it's like, oh, you're getting better? Okay, now I need to be better. And the only way that happens is if I'm pushing you to be better. Like, those are the ones that you kind of just dream for. Not so much dream for, but that's the ones you, you kind of look for. Because you want to know why? They're going to let you know that there is nothing out here to stop you. Like, you are an empowered woman. You are strong. Who's going to take that away from you besides you? No one. And if anyone tries to, you won't let them. You wonder why? Because you're strong. <laughs> and that's something they're going to let you know frequently and quite often, that you have the power to change, honestly, the world. But it starts with you. Can you change your lifestyle? Okay, you changed it. Are you better in yourself? Great. Now, can you better the ones around you that you care about? Oh, you're doing that? Awesome. Fantastic. Now you're getting the ball rolling. And this is honestly how like philanthropists works. Like they start with like the local area and they expand. And women, you have to expand. You need to start building yourselves up and then being able to help build others up. Because you want to know why? It's going to help build you up even more. Just because you feel great that you're doing something just besides yourself. You know, they're also going to offer words to help strategize what you're doing. So if you have an idea, let's just say you want to own a restaurant, like they're going to encourage you to go ahead, open that restaurant. However, they're going to make sure that you're taking the right steps, taking the right actions. They're going to make sure that you are actually putting the restaurant in the right location. Oh, no, honey. There's four of the restaurants in that restaurant in that location. Don't do that. They want to make sure that you're putting the right foods, you know, on your menu in the restaurant. Oh, no, honey, there's a Hispanics um, in that area. So you don't want to focus heavy on, let's just say, burgers. You know, they're going to try to make sure that they question and that you put out the right information. And if you're putting out the right business scheme and strategizing whatever you want to do correctly. Like, they're not going to let you buy Yang stock <laughs> and AMC stocks when they're at the peak $400 and whatnot, you know, <laughs> pricing. Because they know that that is a bubble. And guess what? Pop is what's happening. So they're going to make sure that you're taking the right steps and make sure you're strategizing to do what needs to be done. And overall, they're going to make sure you're on the right path. They're going to keep you on the right path because they're going to keep asking you questions. You might get annoyed with that. However, it starts with questioning to understand what you're trying to do, and that's how we know how to motivate. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, yeah, let's go out and, you know, do 500 steps or whatever. And your goal right now is to do core work. Like, now I'm motivating incorrectly. Like, yeah, you, you need the cardio to help do the core. However, that's not what you're on right now. So I'm going to ask you questions like, hey, what are you working on today? Hey, how are you getting better? Hey, what are you trying to accomplish? Okay, now I know. Now I know what to say and what to do to help get you to where you need to be. That's the type of men that you honestly want to wake up to in the morning. <laughs> so next, we have the protector. And there's two types in which you want both types. But let's get into the two types. So you got the ones that make you feel safe and the ones that make you feel secure. The ones that make you feel safe are the ones that have you at ease, you know, if anything happens. So, like, if a guy tries to step to you, you know, that's not your man, and he's trying to get upon you, maybe he's even getting aggressive because you're dissing him like a good woman should if you have a man. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who's going to step in and be like, yo, what you doing? You know, they're going to make sure that nothing else escalates from that action. And if it does, if it does, then he's going to handle the situation. So he's going to make you feel safe in a sense where if a problem happens, he has it. <clears throat> now, now, this doesn't mean that he's always going to shoot. This also doesn't mean that he's always going to fight. Again, 
The whole idea is that he's going to make you feel at ease that something's going to happen. So even if he has to go in and go talk and just say, yo, like, what's good? Like, you keep on pushing. Like, do what you got to do. But this girl right here, this is my, this is my girl. You know, handle your own business. Like, that right there can make you feel safe because you got somebody who's kind of defending your honor. And that's what you need. And then if it gets to that point where, you know, he has to go to the next step where things might get physical, then that's just what happens. But the whole idea is, do you feel safe? You want to feel protected. Now, that does not mean that you go out and start problems. Because that's what a lot of y'all will try to do. Like, oh, yeah, you got an issue with me? Oh, my boyfriend's going to, you know what's going to happen? Your boyfriend's going to have two options. He's either going to soon or later on end up in jail just because he was fighting. Because it's only so many times you can fight before you just fight in the wrong area and then you get arrested and, you know, situation escalates. Like, there's only so many times you can fight and everything's be okay. Like, it's not high school. Like, you just can't go to the alley and just, you know, handle things. Like, cameras follow, especially in this day and age. So, social media is a big thing. People fight and people pull out camera phones. And big crowds like to follow. So, it's kind of hard just to go around that. And the other option is he's going to leave you. Because it's like, all right, now, I'm not about to just keep fighting just because you got a temper tantrum. Like... You can grow up, especially if, <laughs> especially I've seen this one, where it's really her fault. Like, she will be the type to just start an issue. Let's just say somebody breathed on her wrong. Or what past her, you know, brush upon her. It was by accident. And he even seen it. Like, it wasn't even, like, a big issue. Maybe somebody bumped him that bumped her. And now she got to have a big temper tantrum. And now it's supposed to be a fight just because she feels some other way. Like, you don't want to be that type. You don't want to be the one who's causing the issue. If there is an issue that presents itself, that's where you want to feel safe, that he's going to do what needs to be done. Secure is the one where you feel like he has your heart. You know what I mean? Like, he's the one to really be there how you need him to be. Kind of emotionally and considerably. Because this is the one where you know for sure, or you feel in your heart, that you can trust him. And this is the one where you believe he's never going to cheat. Now, sometimes you turn a little blind eye to that. However, like, you built that bond with him. You built that sense of loyalty. So you feel secure because, like, when you come home, you know, or even if y'all don't live together, but, like, when y'all come together, it's a better way of putting it, you feel very comfortable. Like, when you just rest into his arms, you feel good. Like, you feel like there's nothing to worry about. That's how you want to feel. And when you leave his presence, you feel good. You feel like there's nothing to worry about because you know that, He's handling his business. And the only thing that's on his mind is you. Because you're the one that he cares about. You're the one that he wants to be around. And that's all that matters to him. So when you feel secure, you feel that emotionally. Where it's like, okay, I got a good man. He's about me. He's about his business. And that's what he's shown me. Because he didn't just say these words out of his mouth. You know, uh, to a lot of us, especially to me. Like, words mean nada. Nada. You want to know why? Because it's just, it floats in the air. Like, words to me is like the wind. As soon as you speak it, like, you feel it. Whoa, oh my goodness. However, it passes on. And it does the same thing to other people. So, I feel wind, they feel wind. You can say something to me, and guess what? They can hear it. So, honestly, to words, they're, they're nothing. However, actions, they, they are a bigger part, and they show more. So, when you see that from that person then you get to really feel that. And now you're secure. So your protector makes you feel safe and secure. And the next one, <laughs> take it very cautiously. All right, is the joker. And no, we're not talking about a jokester. No, we're not talking about a clown. Because that's what a lot of y'all deal with. Y'all deal with these clowns. Y'all deal with these, these goofies. Like, <laughs> like no. Those are the ones you want to stay away from. Your clowns, your jokesters, and your goofies. You want to know why? Because they're the ones who aren't really about too much, you know? They're not really trying to get things done. They're not really trying to be productive in this world. And to be successful, you need to be productive. And the ones who cannot are the ones that you kind of just, you know, just you just shook, you know, throw it over your shoulder a little bit. So the jokers are the ones who, the jokers, this is 
clarify, jokers <laughs> are the ones who know how to lighten the mood. So these are the guys who are funny, you know, they know how to make you smile. Like, ladies know how they look when they smile. They know how they feel when they smile. Like, you want that guy to be able to put a smile on your face when you wake up, throughout the day, and when you go to sleep. Like, that's how you want to feel. You want to feel good. Like, you want somebody who can make some laughs, you know, make you laugh. Lighten the mood. Because, again, like, you guys might have some hardships. No. You guys are going to have some hardships. And for those who say they don't, hmm, I wonder what you guys are doing correctly. Because I'm going to take some notes. <laughs> but you guys are going to have some hardships. But being able to have someone who knows how to ease it, ease the pain, ease the ideas, those are the ones you want around because they know things are bad, but things can be worse. So sometimes you got to just really sit back and just have a little chuckle. You know, it might make you feel a little better. Also, the Joker knows how to turn it off because they know everything isn't funny. Even though some things are funny and some things that shouldn't be funny are funny, but they know everything isn't funny. And there's a time and a place to be funny. So the Joker knows how to turn it on and turn it off. And if you want to take it a little step further, if you've ever seen Suicide Squad, <clears throat> if you've ever seen that movie, you've seen the Joker as a prime example of what I'm talking about. You want to know why? Because the Joker made his laughs, he made his jokes, and he is doing some hardcore stuff, but he is still handling his business. You can't really get mad at him. And he knew when to turn it on. And he knew when he turned it off, he turned it off when it came to Harley. The Joker did not play about his woman. When she was in trouble, every time, guess who was there? He was. He was able to get her to off that building, fly her away. He was able to break her out that cell, take her away. The Joker did not play about his woman. He made his jokes. He had their laughs together. The vibe and the chemistry was amazing. If you haven't seen that scene, at least, or those few scenes, just Google it. Like, you would see what I mean. Because when it was time to turn it off, and he turned it off. He did whatever it took to find his woman and get her back. And that is why I say a Joker is important. And lastly, you want a leader. Should I touch more upon that? Of course, that's why you guys are listening. You want somebody who really knows how to take control. They know how to man the ship. Like, you really want a captain. Somebody who's going to be able to get onto the pathway and know what he's doing. Like, you don't want someone who's like, oh, I think, oh, maybe we should, oh, maybe la, 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 la. No. You want somebody who's confident, someone who's really strong-minded, you know, someone who can actually get into the action and do what needs to be done, taking really the risk. So they're the ones who's going to take the risk upon themselves, kind of like your, your good shield, to make sure his family or his woman is in a good position. Because when you got that person to take control, they're the ones who's really making the sacrifices. And not saying that the woman won't make the sacrifices and that she can't make the sacrifices. However, the man who's a leader, he's usually going to make the sacrifices so his woman and his family knows what to do and what not to do. Just like they say, like the biggest way to learn is from mistakes. And the easiest way to learn from mistakes is from learning from other people's mistakes. Now, yes, he may have to make mistakes. And yes, mistakes will be made in the process of trying to get, you know, a better future and to, you know, better yourself. However, he's taking it upon himself to do what needs to be done to make sure other people aren't in pain. That's why you want a leader. And this leader never stops learning. They will never feel contempt of what they already know. Because they know the most dangerous knowledge is what you don't know. Because those that's the thing that can set apart, you know, it's really what sets apart the, the successful versus the average. Because the person who's learning consistently is the one who's trying to make sure that they're always up to date on anything that's changing. This is why some companies succeed and why some companies fail. They stop learning. They stop adapting. You want someone that you feel confident in that's going to be able to teach you what they know. There's one other thing. Like, don't let that person learn and you just sit back and do nothing. Because, like, when they start talking to you upon what they learned and you kind of like, uh-huh, what? Then guess what? 
you're not being and you're not playing your role as a productive woman because now you're not being equal you're not being equivalent to like what's really going on to make the whole ship ship correct and work and steer properly that is why everyone needs to learn he's going to learn because he knows the right thing to do and you're going to learn because that is <laughs> the right thing to do and that's how you guys are going to grow together it's so overall like the leader is the driver like it's the person that you put in this who's steering they're going to put them in the driver's seat and they're the ones who's going to make decisions mostly mainly sometimes but you know you always got your your passenger who you get your instructions from too but they're the ones who are going to take it upon themselves to make the tough decisions decide where we're going decide how things are going to happen and if anything goes wrong then guess what they take it upon themselves to accept you know those consequences could be good could be bad but anything that goes wrong like they will take responsibility for their decision making that's why a leader must be strong must be able to take control and they must be relevant and present so to recap <laughs> you want a motivator the motivator is the one who's going to push you every day they're going to encourage you to do better because you are and can be better they're going to let you know that you are powerful you're a strong woman and who doesn't need one of those <laughs> You're also going to have the protector. The protector is going to make you feel safe and secure. The safety part is where you know that if anything goes wrong, this man is going to be the one to hop out and ensure that his woman is protected, his family is protected, and is going to do everything he can to make sure, make sure things are going swell. You're also going to feel secure with this man because he's going to let you know that you're the one for him. Don't worry about anyone else. He got you. You're going to feel secure emotionally. And you, it's kind of hard to beat that emotional because once you get that emotional strength, like, it's so much growing you guys can do. You're also going to have the joker. Again, not the goofy. <laughs> You're not going to have that guy. You're going to have the guy who knows how to lighten the mood, make a few jokes, make you feel better in a sense. But they also know how to turn it on to be funny and to turn it off when it's time to really get down to business. Then uh, lastly, you're going to have the leader. This is the person who's going to take control. They're going to make sure that everything goes as planned to the best of their capability and if things aren't they're going to take the risk and they're going to make the sacrifice to make sure it gets back on track and i'm going to leave it at that 